you'll see. Is everybody ready to go? It's proclaimed the greatest radio show. Welcome, fans, to another episode of The Spread. I'm your host, Jim Sella, in studio with Jay Dash. We got our cork segment for you this week. We're going to talk about Francisco Lindor and Michael Brantley and how they've helped the Indians climb back into the wild card race. I'd say contention. Are they really in the race? Yeah, it's it's tough to say right now. We'll have to see how it goes over the next week or so. But you look, I mean, Kansas City, they're 82 and 55. Minnesota is in second place actually at 71 and 66 and they're still very much alive in this race as well but they're 11 games back at Kansas City. So this division is over, but it's all about the wild card with these teams. Cleveland, they're still 67 and 69 right now. So they're under 500 and they're 14 and a half games back of Kansas City, but they're 5 games back of Texas right now for the final wild card spot. I guess that's doable. Yeah, I mean, why not? If teams aren't out of it when they're six games back in the division, there's no reason Cleveland should be out of it when they're five games back in the wild card. Yeah, they got to overtake Minnesota, and they got to overtake the Angels as well. But that's not something that's out of the realm of possibility either. It's just a couple teams. If they were behind six, seven teams, then it's a little bit different. But look, they're 12-5 and five in their last 17 games, and they're 18-10 and 10 since... August 8th. Now, there it's been a lot about their pitching as well. I mean, their pitching has been very good recently. Over that 12 and 5 stretch, they allowed 3 runs per game. And during that 28 game stretch where they went 18 and 10, they allowed 3.39 runs per game. And really for the starters, it's been most mostly Carlos Carrasco, Danny Salazar, and Corey Kluber. Now we know Kluber was the Cy Young winner last season, and he's not having as good of a season as he had last year. Getting clubbered. But no, he's not getting clubbered either. He actually is still pretty good. He's just not quite as dominant as he was last year. But these three pitchers have been pitching pretty well recently. And Cody Anderson actually has made a couple good starts recently too. On a quick side note, I just read Max Scherzer's been having a couple garbage starts and he's part of the reason why the Nats are struggling so bad. Yeah, we talked about this in one of our other segments. He's been getting hit around. I mean, he's still striking out a lot of people and not walking a lot of people. It's sort of bad luck with him, I think. He's just getting hit around. $210 million. <laughs> But look... When you look at the Cleveland Indians offense, this is one of the main reasons that they've been on a winning streak. Look, 4.86 runs per game in that 18 and 10 stretch and 4.53 runs per game in this 12 and 5 stretch. And you remember early in the season, I was telling you Jose El Tuve was the best second baseman in baseball and then Jason Kipnis really caught fire and JK47 was saying hold up maybe El Tuve isn't the best maybe it's Jason Kipnis and he was having a great season up until the all-star break there and really uh, he deserved to start in that game but since then I mean look in August he hit 241 with a 293 on base and here in September he's hitting 143 so it's not really him that's helping win these games. Now, Carlos Santana and Yon Gomes, they're playing pretty well recently. Since the beginning of August, Santana has 22 ribbies, while Yon Gomes has 21 ribbies. So they're playing okay. Yon Gomes, I expected more out of him this season, but he, he's playing somewhat well as of late, at least. And then, surprisingly, Lonnie Ch- Chisenhall as well. This guy hit 403 in August. This was a guy that got sent down to the minors earlier this year because he just Figured wasn't it out. Hitting. Yeah, but he had a big month in August, so we'll have to see if he can continue that or not. But really, the two guys, like you said earlier, Lindor and Brantley, these are the guys that are leading this team, at least the offense, to this winning streak here. Lindor's beast on the field, too. Yeah, Lindor, he's a great shortstop, obviously. Still young. He's going to get better, too. I mean, he's made a couple errors recently, but he'll fix that as he grows. But look, in August, he hit 370 with a 413 on base, had two jacks, eight doubles, 12 RBIs, 18 runs, added four stolen bases, and 108 at bats. So he had a great August. And then in September here, he's playing okay 286 with a 318 on base, three doubles, one triple, but he only K'd one time in 21 at bats. In fact, he has K'd less than 20% of his at bats in each of the past two months. And like I said, he's on fire. 14 multi-hit games since August 5th. 
in on the season. This guy's hitting 305 with a 344 on base, seven jacks, seven stolen bases, and he's hitting a lot of doubles as well. He's showing some nice gap power as well. And really, when a lot of people were saying before this guy got called up that he wasn't going to be able to hit immediately, produce at the plate immediately. He was more of a shortstop first guy this year for defense, and then maybe in the future he'll turn it around with the bat. But, I, I mean, I said it from the beginning, man. I This was my favorite prospect shortstop, and he's showing it. Like I said, he's hitting over 300 already in 295 at-bats. That's just 74 games played, too. So the seven home runs, seven stolen bases, that's in less than a half a season. So he kind of reminds me of Michael Brantley at the plate. Now, he only took 19 walks in 295 at bats while he K'd 51 times, but he showed in the minors he doesn't K much, which 51 Ks isn't bad, but the walks should go up as he matures as well. And if you look, he got off to a slow start too. He was hitting 211 after his first 57 at bats when he got recalled in June. And after those 57 at bats, he did not play the following day. And then he hasn't missed a game since. July, he hit 295. And like I said, in August, he hit 370. And this is a guy that's still very young, 21 years old. So he is a definite superstar here in the future and he's already shown it at the plate we know he can play good defense and he's already hitting at the top of this lineup so he is one of the main reasons they're winning and like i said he kind of compares to michael brantley at the plate but brantley right now he takes a ton of walks 56 walks compared to 44 k's and 475 at bats i don't know if lindor is going to be that good eventually but i think he can start to get around that range and like I said, on the season, Brantley hitting 320 with a 390 on base, has 12 home runs and 14 stolen bases and 475 at bats. That's kind of what I expect out of Lindor. So these are two similar players to me. But Michael Brantley, man, he had a huge month of August. Hit 406 with a 463 on base, three jacks, 10 doubles, 17 RBIs, 19 runs, added three stolen bases in 96 at bats. Got off to a little bit of slow start here in September, hitting 238. Isn't Brantley old? Is this the same Michael Brantley I'm thinking of? Am I thinking of somebody else? You're thinking of Milton Bradley. Maybe. That's who you're thinking. This Probably. guy, I mean, he's not old. He's 28 years old. Maybe he's going to be turning 29 soon, something yeah, like I that. I must be thinking of Bradley then because I thought he was like 34. No. All right. Michael Brantley I is like a beast. Milton Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> I like Coco Crisp. Me too. Put him on the same team. <laughs> Be fun and delicious. But look, Brantley is a guy that I came into this season saying he was a beast. Now, he's not going to give you huge stats in the home run department, not huge stats in the stolen base department, not really huge, huge stats anywhere, but he's just a great player and very consistent. Like I said, he hardly ever Ks. He walks a ton. I mean, this year he's driving in runs, 75 ribbies this season. And he's hitting 320, like I said. But he's very consistent, too. Look, he has at least one hit in 29 of his last 35 games. He's K'd more than he walked in just one month this season. And that was in August when he hit 406. So I'm sure they can deal with that. And he hasn't went hitless in back-to-back -back games since July 3rd and July 4th. And that was at Pittsburgh. Because Pittsburgh is dominant, obviously. <laughs> it's not against the Brewers. <laughs> yeah, please believe. But look, even more recently, Brantley's been playing better. He had five home runs in his first 305 at-bats of the season. That all came before the All-Star break. After the All-Star break, seven home runs in 170 at-bats. So you can see his power stroke is coming along here towards the end of the season as well. And like I said, consistent, consistent, consistent. He hasn't hit below 282 in any month. So this guy is a beast. And look, they're hitting Lindor second in the order with Brantley third in the order. And that's where I like them to bat. Like I said, Santana has been driving in a lot of runs, mostly because Lindor and Brantley, because Santana hits right behind them. So he's having a lot of RBI chances with Lindor and Brantley being a, a beast. Well, both of them are beasts right now. But what could really help this Cleveland club is getting Jason Kipnis back on his game. He bats first in the order. So if you could get him hitting like he was earlier in the season, Lindor and Brantley playing how they are playing now, 
Santana's even going to have more RBI chances then, and Lindor and Brantley will have more too if Kipnis can get on base more often. So, I mean, this team, all they need is Kipnis to turn it around, and I think this offense can really explode because, I mean, you'll have Jan Gomes batting behind them as well, and he's going to have a lot of RBI chances as well. Indians should have traded for A-Rod. He's about to get 30 jacks. Trade for A-Rod. <laughs> Ugh, I wouldn't either. That contract's ridiculous. Well, actually, they sold at the deadline. They got rid of Brandon Moss. They could still yeah. have Brandon Moss in here. I'm not saying it was a bad move to get rid of him because they've been playing better without him. But he is hitting it in St. Louis right now over his past 8 to 10 games or so. So, I mean, they could have Brandon Moss in here. But I, I like what they got going right now. And I still think they have a chance to overtake Minnesota and Texas, really. Of course, they got to take over the Angels, too. You know me. I love me the Indians. So I hope... So I hope they get it. I really like the Indians, too. They're not my favorite team like they are you. I guess Is it your favorite team? Please believe. There you go. I thought maybe the Yankees for a second. Nah, man. I just like A-Rod. <laughs> but you want the Yankees to make the playoffs because of A-Rod? Yes. It? And despite you. And despite me. A lot of things are usually on this show despite you. But look, Cleveland. <laughs> yeah, I don't give a crap. Two more <laughs> games at, at the Chicago White Sox. They have two remaining here. And then they start an 11-game homestand beginning with the Tigers. But they have seven more games against Minnesota still, so they could easily overtake them if they went 5-2 and two against them in or those seven, seven games. 7-0. Yeah, I mean, they could do – yeah, I guess that could happen as well. But, they're like I said, they're only three and a half games behind Minnesota too. So seven games, they could definitely overtake them and finish second in the AL Central. That is a definite possibility. The, the harder thing – is going to be to overtake the Texas Rangers and the Los Angeles Angels because they have no games with them. So they it got to play out. They just got to keep winning a lot of games here down the stretch to get back in the wild card spot. Not really get back in it. They they were in last place there for a while. They were playing terrible baseball for a lot of this season. So it's pretty surprising. They're just two games under 500 right now and still in this playoff race. Keep playing good baseball. They're going to end the season with 93 wins. 93 wins. What are they right now? 67 and 69. 93 wins. <laughs> That's 26 more wins. In so the they're going to go 26 like 26 games. That's it. They're going to go undefeated the rest of the year. That's yeah. That's pretty much what they have to do. <laughs> That'd be awesome. They'd make a movie about it. Really, all they have to do, I mean, I trust this pitching with Carrasco, Salazar, Kluber. They have one of the best closures in baseball, although he's been inconsistent somewhat this season in Cody Allen. And, I mean, they have some other pitchers out there, too. So I trust the pitching staff. I just want to see Kipnis start to hit again, and then the top five, six hitters in this order should be able to mash. Realistically, what do you think it's going to take for that final wild card spot? 85 wins? At least. It may be 87, something like that. They got some work to do. Well, that wraps up our Cork segment this week. Thank you, Dash, for coming in. Thank you, fans, for listening. Fans, you can follow us on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. You can follow me on Twitter at bet Jim the win. Check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash bet the spread. Keep coming back to YouTube. Keep clicking subscribe. <laughs>